Today we're gonna go over the most common and also the funniest chess mistake that you can see right now on the board. And I'm saying that it's funny because lots of players play this position for years, sometimes for decades, without realizing that they're doing it wrong. I'm gonna show you how you can win it as black, also how you can use the same tactics to win it as white, and finally, what to do if your opponent knows the right defense, but how you can still crush them, making it just super effective. Now, this position may arise from different move order, Usually white goes pawn e4, black responds pawn e5, knight of 3, knight to c6, and here white usually develops one of the other minor pieces in whatever order, let's say bishop c4, knight of 6, it attacks the pawn, and some more advanced folks might try knight g5, the fried liver attack, but it leads to complicated variations and you gotta know a ton of theory there, that's why many would choose a simpler option knight to c3, thinking that it's all good and they just develop. In fact, that's how most players are taught to play chess at the beginning, they're said yeah, just play e4 and develop knights and bishops, right, so that's what they do. Now, here's what's wrong with it, they just miss the fact that black can use these little tactics here, knight takes e4. It sacrifices a knight temporarily, and on the next move you hit with the move pawn to d5, which is a fork, and you regain your piece, usually with interest, and since your opponent doesn't know what to do, very often they collapse and you win the game quickly. Now, there is a way for white out, but again, as I mentioned, I'll show you how to defeat even that proper way in a moment. But let's first talk about this current position. So what will your opponent do here? Well, there are a couple options. Your opponent will realize that he's in some sort of trouble, that he's gonna lose a minor piece in the next move, and they'll try to get something for his material. So some reckless souls will even play knight takes e5, thinking that, okay, they also wanna grab a pawn for their piece. But it fails, because after knight takes e5, it turns out that white lost this knight from f3, but nothing really changed. This fork remains to be active, so white's gonna lose one more minor piece on the next move, so their sacrifice did not help at all. By the way, this pawn is defended by the queen, therefore white cannot capture it, or else they will lose a bishop this way. Some of your opponents will decide to be tricky, and they will decide, hey, if I'm gonna lose this bishop on the next move anyway, let me play this move, bishop takes f7, and so I'm calling his king out, I'm destroying, you know, the pawn shield, and now I regain this knight, and I'm super smart. Now, against those players, there is a way to defeat them. In fact, I recorded videos about this opening mistake some time ago, and many of you asked me, like, what to do if my opponent sacrifices the bishop this way? So here's the solution. You play pawn to d5, and it turns out that your opponent cannot checkmate your king with a single knight. I mean, your, your king is really well defended. It is surrounded by your pawns and pieces, and a single knight is nowhere near enough to develop any significant attack. In fact, you've got the strong center that's moving forward, that is pressing this knight, and the next move you'll play e4 and press the other knight, you have two strong bishops, and life is just good. If your king is ever attacked, it can slide back to g8 and it's in complete safety. So white attack fails before it could even begin. For example, if your, your opponent goes knight to g3, you keep playing e4, this time pressing this knight, notice that it can go forward, as you are so strong that you cover all these squares already, pretty smart. So the knight has to go back to its starting square, knight to g1, and here there is a really strong follow-up, which I love a lot. It is the move pawn to h5. So, this is a double purpose move. First, you can play h4 and press this knight back as well, which would be nice. Secondly, you also prepare to play a bishop g4 hitting the queen, which is also, like, really uncomfortable for white, actually. But of course, the question that your opponent will think is, hey, what if I simply capture it, because this knight is defended by the queen, therefore like can't take it with the rook, or else they will lose the rook. At first it looks like you just blundered this move knight takes h5, but you watch this video, so you know that there is a catch. It's the move queen to h4. Quite a sudden move, where it's hacking this knight twice, forcing it to go back to g3. Now you continue with bishop g4. Notice how you attack with every move that you play, even though your opponent when he sacrificed this bishop on f7, was hoping that he'll be an attacker, right? But that didn't happen. Life sucks. That's true. All right, so bishop g4 hits the queen. He needs to cover it. And if he covers with the knight, you can also go knight d4, put more pressure. So f3 looks much more active for white. Now, after you recapture on f3, your opponent still has a glimpse of hope. Because from f3, the knight is attacking the queen. Also, he's ready possibly to castle short and then to start kind of targeting your king along the f file. It seems like life's good for white for a second, right before you play your next move, which is queen takes g3. You sacrifice your queen and destroy white completely. This is a check to the king, and after the queen is captured, you then grab this rook on h1. Strangely enough, your rook from h8 becomes your main attacking piece in this game. 
this is a check to the king and we want to x-ray and capture white's queen on the next move. If white tries to hold on to the queen and defend it, then you can bring the other rook into play, rook e8 check, forcing the king to move anyway, and after the king goes away, you can then grab a queen, and now you, like, literally erased almost all of white's pieces, you have a huge material advantage, you're gonna play bishop c5 or something like that, and you'll win within a couple moves. Alright, let's explore some other options. After we play knight takes e4, most of your opponents will accept this knight sack, then you play pawn d5 to regain your piece on the next move, and here your opponent will usually notice that you're about to capture one of his minor pieces for nothing, and therefore he'll decide that, hey, at least I want to get a pawn for my piece. So in most cases they will play bishop takes d5, which is wrong, but that's what they play. Now, after queen recaptures, we now attack this knight on e4, we grab the center, we also have two strong bishops, and this all sets up you for like quite strong attack on the following moves. And white's position is a lot worse than it seems at first, actually. First of all, the knight is attacked. If the knight goes to c3 to attack your queen, I recommend queen d6, just keeping it safe so that you don't worry about this in the future. I mean, other moves are also possible, just from experience, you know, whenever your queen is in more dangerous, sometimes I notice that my students mess up later, even though their position is objectively good. So let's keep it safe. Now, they'll play something like d3 or castle, doesn't really matter, and then you bring your bishop out to g4. Lots of your opponents have no idea how to handle this pin effectively, and they just go down badly. They may try h3, but it doesn't really matter, you just go back bishop h5. And uh, let's say they castle, and you castle queenside, that's part of your plan in this position, because you're ready to do that, so it's easier. And then, you know, you have this strong pin, the knight is pinned down to the queen, you're ready to play knight to d4 and strengthen the pressure. In many variations, you want to play pawn f5, you know, and grab the center, control the square, maybe even push e4 yourself at some point. And white's really in trouble, because you have all these attacking ideas, and your opponent has nothing really. And that is why I said that black will often win here, just because your opponent is clueless of what to do. Again, they don't know how to handle this pin. So that's how you win, even if your opponent plays, like, just most common moves. Now, by the way, if you want to know how to handle this pin effectively, I've got another video about that. I'll, link, I'll drop a link in the description. I would highly recommend that you watch it because that will prevent you from losing countless games and you'll know how to turn the situation around. Now, what is the right way for white? And is there a right way? Yes, it is. Generally speaking, bishop is a bit stronger than knight. That's why white would wish to save the bishop, not the knight. And the way to do that is to, say, is to play a bishop to d3, giving away the knight. And after pawn takes, bishop recaptures. And here, objectively speaking, position is equal, but still there is a good attacking plan for black that I'd like to suggest. First, you just play bishop d6, getting ready to castle, and you also solidify your center just in case so that white can't ever, you know, grab this pawn. After that, your pawn will usually castle, you do the same. Like, temporarily, the position looks equal, but there's a problem for white. What are they gonna do? If they just play pawn to d3, let's say, then you still play the same pin bishop g4, and white has all the same troubles that we discussed a minute ago in the main line. Your opponent simply does not know how to handle this pin. They'll usually throw this move h3, but as you go back, they don't know what to do next. I mean, g4 is just overcommitting, and uh, that exposes the king, and without g4, they don't know how to handle it. You're ready to play f5, get this bishop away, maybe play knight d4 to strengthen the pressure, like all the same idea. So you have this simple attacking plan, your opponent is clueless of what to oppose. That's how you often win. There is also another common blunder for white here. They go bishop g5, thinking that they're also doing something active and they're attacking your queen. But instead of defending or covering anyhow, you actually should counter strike with the move bishop takes f3, grabbing the knight and attacking his queen along the way. So what's nice is you grab this knight on a 3, which means that after that, if we just trade queens, which would be an equal exchange, you'll still will be up a knight at the end. So that you just win a knight for nothing. Or if white captures on f3 somehow, you then grab this undefended bishop and you are still up a piece and you win. Some of your opponents in this position will wish to play more actively. Would cover that if they played d3, just a more defensive move, you then go bishop g4 establishing this pain. But some of your opponents will wish to kind of strike in the center with the move pawn to d4. Looks like it makes a lot of sense, but then you just trade everything on d4. Knight takes, pawn takes, queen takes, and at this point your opponent thinks that life's good, but it ends really quickly for white after bishop takes h2 with a discovered check to his queen. Alright, the trap is cool, but can you use it as white, not only as black? You surely can. You play the same opening moves, e4, e5, knight of 3 knight c6, most common opening moves ever, and now you do want to play knight c3, not bishop c4, I'll show you why in a second. 
So we play bishop c3, knight to c3, I'm sorry, and we wait for them to develop their bishop right here, because there it will be exposed to our tactics. Your opponents will usually either develop the knight or the bishop. If they develop the bishop, you can utilize the same tactics right away. So we play knight takes e5, after knight recaptures, pawn to d4, and that's the exact same tactics used as white, and you still have great winning chances here. That's why we waited for your opponent to develop the bishop right here, so that we can attack it with these tactics. Alright, let's get it back. What if your opponent does not develop the bishop right here? What if he instead plays knight of 6? Can you still use these tactics? Yes, you can. You just play a bishop to b5. Again, you do not want to keep your bishop on c4, in a second we'll see why. So you play bishop b5 and guess which move is the most popular for black here? Yes, it's still bishop c5. They want to develop the bishop and this looks like the most optimal square for it. But this still exposes the bishop to the very same tactics. You play knight takes e5 and as he recaptures we play pawn d4, reaching the position that we want to achieve. Now, notice that it's important for us to have our own bishop on b5, not on c4, because the c4 square is more, val more vulnerable to attack. And if your bishop were here, your opponent would be able to capture it with his knight, and our tactics would fail. That's why we do not want our bishop to stand on c4, but on any other square. And in the current position, life's good. I mean, after, let's say, bishop takes d4, which is what they do, queen takes, you hit this knight currently. They can't even defend it with a pawn because it's pinned down to the king. And it's actually a complete devastation. If knight goes away, you can push e5, chase away another knight. If knight goes here, in order not to waste time moving the queen around, you can trade it off. And then you can go bishop g5, establishing our favorite pin. Then you still threaten pawn e5, you can castle queenside. And your attack is just so strong. I think computer already shows it like plus 3 for white, something like that. I mean, it's completely devastating. If you have any other questions about certain other options that I didn't cover in this video, I actually have another video where I cover those more rare sidelines and you can check it out by clicking the link right here. So go crush everyone, also then let me know in the comments how it worked for you. And if you want to level up your chess overall and also learn chess strategy, check out this free masterclass where I handhold you to chess success. Have a great rest of the day, ciao!